probably this is a very unique occasion when we have a representation of the decision makers of entire gamut of the geospatial community. What I would like to do in next five to seven minutes to just give you a glimpse of where the geospatial industry and digital world is converging. We live in a digital world and geospatial is a very, very co important component of the digital world. So this is the digital ecosystem where we talk about the processes, intelligence, engineering, artificial intelligence, portals, social media, mobile apps. All this what we do today has a very important component of location. It, it helps locate our assets. It helps monitor the change. It helps monitor and track your movement. So in a digital world, when everything is connected, but everything is at some place, at some time, and what geospatial community does is to empower you locate that particular asset or movement as well as give you that information in a visual form in a map. So makes that very simple. So makes the communication of digital language simpler and more powerful and that is what is all about our industry. And what are the drivers of our industry are the kinds of wireless, cloud, IOTs and robotics. And more and more we move into automation, robotics, and kind of you know applications, you will see the much more critical role of what we do. We are moving from a position to a precision kind of applications and we do different kind of applications from a zero or maybe a millimeter accuracy to a 10 meter accuracy. And these are the kind of applications which we deal with depending upon the kind of resolution. So this is very important that we don't confuse between a consumer kind of application and a professional kind of application of this technology. So these kind of applications would require different kind of treatments. And that's why it is very important that how we are moving from a position to a precision kind of applications. And looking at driving technologies, of course, today as well, the cloud is leading and it will continue to lead. It will continue to drive our industry, followed by IoT, big data, and automation. And these are the drivers of our industry of tomorrow. So it's better that we start engaging with these communities. It's better that when we create our policies, we create our policies keeping that in mind that these are the future applications, which is where we are heading to. So what we are doing in terms of the process embedment and how we are making difference is that basically Spatial technology is not emerging as a standalone technology, but it is getting embedded into the process of engineering or analytics or customer relation management or utilities. So this is where we are getting inside. So it's basically looking at location inside by being location inside. So that's the kind of embedment uh, our industry is moving towards. And this is, look at the Benefits are not today just decision support system, but efficiency, productivity, monitoring, and transparency. And monitoring and transparency are so very important for developing world because this is where we have a lot of challenge. So the, it is, in fact, this is an obstacle as well because, because of being transparent technology, it is not so easily acceptable at many levels in the government and the private sectors. But that's the larger message which I'm trying to deliver is that we have to have that political will to adopt this technology because ultimately in the long run it is going to help us. These are the industries which is helping uh, or rather being helped by our uh, you know, technology. But all these industries are further building up to the national economy. What is national economy? Economy is based on tourism, energy, transportation, mining, agriculture. But if geospatial is empowering and enhancing those capabilities, ultimately we are building a much better robust economy and contributing in the economy. So that's the kind of indirect value chain of our technology. Few of the factors, you know, the, you know I, I very proudly say that we are making more than a $500 billion industry. And some of the facts which has been 
given by various studies in last 10 years, which talks about China to be about $81 billion, uh, US to be about $75 billion, or the value of geospatial in Canadian economic to be $21 billion. And one which is missing here is the Ordnance Survey, which came up with the report that in UK, the value of geospatial in the GDP is about 26 billion pounds. So those kind of studies which has been done would just give an impact to you that how we are creating a value chain in our economy and our uh, you know industry. And that's what I think that the political leadership has to look at it at more seriously and more uh, you know uh, with an open mind. We did a readiness index of uh, our uh, world and we picked about 50 countries around the world and uh, how these nations are ready to harness the value of this technology. And that's very critical because this readiness is not only about technology but about policies, but about uh, enough science and academics as well as about local industrial culture that where are we standing in that. So these, these are the indicators which are building together for you so that you can have a better look at this. So my a key uh, recommendation to the Honorable Minister and the bureaucrats and the industry people would be to work together to develop an integrated national geospatial infrastructure and policy framework. When you are creating a geospatial infrastructure, don't look at just the maps, look at the statistics, look at marine information, look at geological information, look at all the kinds of information to be part of that strategy and create a policy framework around that. National geospatial information infrastructure has to be strengthened. Reliable geodetic infrastructure to augment the positioning capabilities has to be a part of the responsibility of the public sector. Fundamental science and research institutions encourage the fundamental science around and follow open standards and open data policies. Align and contribute to the global initiatives. There are several global initiatives taking place in the field of geospatial information collaboration like United Nations GGIM or GEO or ISOs. Please align your policies accordingly so that tomorrow you can play a better role into the world uh, geospatial uh, industry. Let's look at industrial innovation and incubation as a part of the policy where you create innovation and incubation centers give this data to the people, give this data to the centers, they can really make a number of applications addressing the social problems. Embrace the next generation because if you do not embrace the next generation, look at only yesterday or today, we are not going to be actually making use of this technology. Develop a spirit a spirit of trust and partnerships because most of the partnerships do not work because there is no spirit of trust. We don't trust each other. We need to build that up, you know, in ourselves and please create guidelines for the public-private partnerships. I would say that we partnership and collaboration and looking at tomorrow's generation is the key message which I want to deliver. And the mapping agencies should look at transforming themselves from being a producer to enabler and facilitator of geospatial capacity. You have to look at how can you enable the whole ecosystem rather than creating uh, maps. Your job is probably not anymore to create maps. Your job is to create policies, infrastructure, which can enable the whole community. Community doesn't mean the private sector, only the community of also the SDG community. Community is also the citizens. Community is also the governments. That's where we need to move forward. With this, I would like to thank you very much.